Hello everybody, welcome back to the Lake District and welcome to Troutbeck. So if you cast your mind back a whole week, I know it is difficult, you remember that I went up the eastern ridge of the Kentmere Horseshoe. This week I'm going up the western ridge, which is arguably the better side of the Kentmere Horseshoe. It's very controversial, I know, but yeah, it is. So what I've done is I've parked just south of Town Head. I'm now walking along Ing Lane, right towards the Tongue. In fact, I can see the whole route here today. Tell you what, let's go and have a look at the map and see where we're going. So I've parked just outside of Troutbeck Village and I'm heading towards the Tongue via the beautiful Ing Lane, passing Troutbeck Park and then up onto the open fell side, where I'll bag the first way right of the day, the Tongue, before picking up the old Roman road that'll take me up to Park Fell and that West Ridge. Then it's a very short walk up to Frosick and then over to Ilbell and then finally along to York. After York, I'll be heading down to the Garbon Pass. I've still got two more fells to go on this walk, the first of which is this one here, Sallows. Then I'll be heading over to the final fell of the day, Sourhouse, before a very rapid descent back into the Troutbeck Valley via Limefit Park. And then it's time for the pub. So as you can see, it is a fairly lengthy walk. In fact, I think this could be one of, if not the longest walk in this particular season. So in terms of weather, I think it's going to be a dry one and we're going to get views. As you can see, there's blue sky and the sun is just and so hitting the tops now, but it is going to be a hazy day, I think. I think there's going to be some high level cloud uh, and sun, which is what it's forecast to do. that will be nice. It's supposed to be around about one degree on the top. It is very cold this morning, quite frosty. Yeah, lovely, not a breath of wind. I'm excited, I'm excited because the last few walks have been, well, downright flipping miserable, haven't they? And this walk in particular has some absolutely outstanding views. They really are beautiful. So I'm chuffed to bits that I can actually show them to you if you've not seen them before. And if you have seen them before, then you can enjoy them again. Right, let's get onto Troutbeck Park and the foot of the tongue and get up there. That's an interesting looking tree. I bet this whole area looks absolutely stunning in spring and summer. Okay, this is Ing Bridge and we're actually crossing Troutbeck itself now. Now Troutbeck starts way up there in the mountains, up by Thresh that Mouth, where I was a few weeks ago, and then runs out straight into Windermere. It's absolutely beautiful. And sure enough, there are actually brown trout in there. So if you've ever travelled from Troutbeck up to Kirkston Pass, you'll have noticed by the side of the road on the right, there's a big drop down into the valley. This is it. This is where I am right now. And I can see the road up there. I can see cars every now and then. Right, this is Troutbeck Park and this is a sheep farm that was once owned by Beatrix Potter, one of the many she owned. As you can see, there's a lot of our little herdy friends here. And there's a nice finger post here that tells you that this is the path that branches off from the track and it's going to take us up to High Street if we wanted to go to High Street, but we don't, so that's okay. But this is the path. <laughs> hey herdies! Oh, there's so many of them, so many of them. Have a look, I'll eat the turnips. Nice crab one I used for my lunch. A turnip, not a hoodie. Flip an egg. Hey hoodie. So you can very clearly see this dark thread of a trod going up the hillside here. So yeah, it's just a case of follow that up. It looks like a very, very pointy tongue right now from this angle, doesn't it? 
It's really impressive from here. Always go through the bigger gate if I can. Because of my bag. Right, back on the track. This is the same track that runs through Troutbeck Park that came off a minute ago. There wasn't one of those on the other side, was there? Did you see one? I didn't see it. I'm so glad it was herdies in there and not a bull. Okay, so through the gate and straight up and to the right a little bit. And it's going to follow the, the contour of the ridge there. This track just carries on up towards Frosic and is actually the course of the old Roman road, the one that goes up over High Street. And after I come back down off the tongue on the other side, the north side, I'll be rejoining this Roman road once again. Lovely. This is a lovely little hill. I don't know if this is an official style. It certainly looks like a style of some description. Seems very high. <laughs> oh. I'm going to jump and hopefully my camera's not going to smash. Okay, now just follow this wall for a little bit and pick up the main path. It's going to take me to the summit. It's looking very nice up there though. The sun is just touching the top. Beautiful, just hitting those crags. All right, here is the main path up. As you can see, it's pretty flipping steep. So I'm going to get my head down and get up there and yeah, just get it over and done with. This is going to be a bit of a sweat fest, but flipping out. Look at that down there now. That is beautiful. That's Ill Bell there, so that'll be the second fellow of the day. Looking forward to being up there and looking back down at here. Right, let's get up. Gulp. This is pretty steep. Bit of a shock to the system. And out into the sunshine. At last. Oh, that's lovely. That's the first bit of sunlight we've had in weeks up here. So nice to feel it on the skin. <laughs> and I can just see the sun slowly creeping into the valley now. Yeah, it's looking really beautiful down there. Oh, and not too far actually. So I've got this little gate up here, through there, and then up onto the summit. So yeah, it's a short, sharp shock. Beautiful. That's a really beautiful view, just as you go through this gate. You've got Dodd Hill there, the pointy bit. Hopefully you can see the cars going along the, the road up to Kirkston Pass. It's looking very nice the other way as well, looking back up towards York. This is quite a nice little section of the walk. It threads its way up through these little rocks. Fun, easy scrambling. I mean, scrambling's a little bit. Fast and loose with that word, isn't it, really? Oh, got really hot then. <laughs> it's not mega steep, but yeah, I think I've got way too many layers on at the moment. But at this point, it sort of levels off a little bit and you can see now, way over in the distance there, the summit. But it's definitely worth looking south at this point because you can really see Windermere coming into view. As well as Windermere, if we look out to the west, we can see Red Screes over there. And really make out the road up to Kirkston Pass. And also looking north, right up towards Thornthurt Crag. So yes, at this point, all the views are opening up.
what a cute little summit that is. Love that little pile of stones there. And obviously the view in the background, flipping egg. But have a look out towards Threshtut Mouth there. Look at it. And Thornthut Crag. There's a real soft glow everywhere now. Beautiful. It is now time to do a slightly demoralizing thing. And that is head down before going back up again. It is a bit of a shame that we have to do this, but yeah, it's just the, the way it is, isn't it? Because this, this hill sits out on its own. It's a tongue, you know? Yeah, I could just and so make out the path going down here and then obviously going back up to the other side, up towards um, Frosic there, the old Roman road. So we're picking up that track again very shortly. Right, I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit. Just look at this. Like many places in the Lake District, there's evidence of quarry works everywhere, all over this hill. On that side, on the west side there, and I can see some over on the other side of the valley there, on the side of, let's have a look at this, uh, Ill Bell, just over there. Still going down, that's quite disheartening. So from here, get a really good view of Thresh That Mouth just there. And a few weeks ago on that pasture bottom round, I came down, dropped onto Thresh That Mouth, and back up to Thornthut Crag there. Ooh. 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 It's a bog fest round here. Okay, foot to there, sort of. Well, that's a cute little gate just ruined by all that bog around it. Now Wainwright does mention in his book that at this section of here, it does get a little bit squelchy underfoot. Really, really lovely. Enjoying this walk immensely so far. Uh, I've seen two people. It's crazy considering how flipping gorgeous it is here. Look at it. I love all this grass. I love it. Yep, a little bit soggy underfoot. Hey, Hurdy. Right, I've now rejoined the old Roman road. Comes up the valley here from Troutbeck Park. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a rest here for a few minutes. Nice isn't it? Such an amazing view. Light is not great today but on a, a good light day this will be a fantastic place to stand. You know I can imagine the photographs you get here of this gate and that background. Right enough waffle. Let's get up there. Okay, that section, just there, up to the corner of this wall, is the easy bit. <laughs> now I'm about to hit the steep section. You can see here, I mean, I don't know how steep it looks here, but yeah, it's pretty steep. But the path, once again, sort of cuts across the contour, so it shouldn't be too bad. We'll see. But I'm about the same height now as the tongue. I can't wait to see the views at the top. I'll show you what we can see. What I'll do is I'll get to Frosic. I won't hang around there, I'll just, you know, show you. And then we'll move on to Ilbel, and then I'll set up the camera and show you the full view, what you can see, all the fells and, and everything else that you can see. Right, I'm not gonna talk now for quite some time. I'll see you a bit further up towards the bit where it levels off between Frosic and Thornthut Crag. Oh, 
boy. Steady away. Oh, this is a nice section of the path. Lovely. I love paths like this. They just wind around the hillside. Beautiful. Look at that. That's looking back up towards Stony Cove Pike, right in front of us. A little patch of snow on the side as well. I don't know if you can see that. That's it, that's all the snow in the whole of the Lake District. Okay, eventually get to a little bit of a junction marked by this pile of stones here. If I carry on up to the left, I'll be going up to Thornthwaite Crag. I don't want that. I'm going to go off to the right here and pick up that main path that goes from York to Thornthwaite Crag. So as I suspected, though the ground is very steep, the path actually cuts right across the contours, making it much flatter than, than it would be if you just went straight up. When I say flat, <laughs> I don't mean it's a walk in the park. Definitely gets the blood pumping. Whew. Look at these views now. It all opens up at this point. I mean, I can even see right out towards Black Coombe. Incredible, really. It's a hazy day, yet it's kind of clear. It's, it's a weird one. Looking forward to getting up to Ill Bell and then showing you what we can see. In fact, I'm looking forward to getting up to the ridge here because at that point I'll be able to see the Eastern Ridge from last week's walk and gaze upon the beauty that is Nanbeel Pass. Okay, here we go. Just getting to the ridge now. I'm looking forward to seeing those views across the valley. Lovely. Let's keep going. <laughs> Look at that drop. Flip a neck. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Can't quite see Nanbeel Path. It's just behind Lingmel End here. So, yeah, I think once I get up to Frosic, up here, I should get a view. If not Frosic, definitely Ill Bell. Nice, it's nice to see it. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't see a flipping thing last week. Right, let's get on up to the second summit of the day, Frosic. So I think things are going to get much busier now. Probably going to see quite a lot of people on this route because this is the Kentmere Horseshoe. Okay, here we are on the summit of Frosic. Look at these views. <laughs> okay, I might have a quick whiz around with the camera now and show you what you can see very quickly because there's some things you probably won't be able to see from Mill Bell, I'd imagine, like Ullswater. <laughs> Definitely be able to see Kentmere Reservoir there. Ill Bell, look at Ill Bell. That big black hulk of a mountain. Windermere. Crinkles, I can see Bowfell, I can see the Scarfells. I'll show you all those up on Ill Bell. Thornfoot Crag, High Street, Mardale, Ill Bell. <laughs> and I think we can see the whole pass now as well. I'm not going to hang around. Like I said, I'm going to get on to Ill Bell and have some lunch up there. It's not far. 10 minutes tops to get to Ill Bell from here. So I'm going to do that. Let's go. I think this has to be one of the best ridge walks in the Lake District. Now I know it's not like a knife edge, like striding edge or sharp edge, but it is still a ridge. It's just a long broad one. It's beautiful, honestly. And to be honest with you, as much as it pains me to say this, because you know last week was a lot of effort, a lot of work, just don't even bother doing that side. Just do the western ridge and yeah, you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of it because the view's just amazing in every direction Windermere to the south all the Lake District out towards the west which you can't really we well, can see bits of it from over there but obviously this ridge obscures much of it yeah it's a fine ridge it 
really is. So I'm just getting down to the call between Frosic and Ilbel and a little bit of a pull up here. It's not much at all. Probably five to seven minutes walk. So it's not far. I'm just getting a bit, a bit hungry. <laughs> Okay, a little bit of a slog, <laughs> but not too bad. Just this last section now. <sighs> Look at the views, honestly. Breathtaking. I love this crag here. That's fantastic. Look at those sharp needles sticking up. And looking back towards Frosic and Thornthick Crag beyond. Oh, it's getting steeper. Top is just over here. Just gonna dig deep in those last few feet. Here we are. So this is it. The multi caned summit of Ill Bell. There's one there, another little one there. Quite a good one there. <laughs> Lovely. Little fence post with no fence. Wow, what a view. Tell you what, let me show you everything that we can see from here right now. But I'm now going to eat. I was thinking perhaps dropping down here a little bit, but I think that way is out of the wind, so... Yeah, I think this could do. Well, that's perfect. I'm going to stop and have lunch here, out of the wind, and enjoy that view out to the west. Wow. <laughs> Okay, all fed and watered, and uh, yeah, satisfied. Energy levels are back up. Once again, apologise 
if there's food remnants on my mouth. <laughs> Disgusting. I think you'll agree, flipping amazing fell this one. Really is the views, as you just saw, in all directions are mind blowing. I mean, look at it. Right, I need to get on. And to get on down to York, pretty leisurely stroll back down now, actually, all the way down to Garden Pass. So, yeah, pretty straightforward. That's lovely. And I'm also going to enjoy a little bit of chocolat, as recommended by one of you lot. <laughs> so, that's three Wainwrights done, three more to go. So, I'm halfway. However, I'm way beyond halfway on the actual walk itself. So you can see from here as well, the cave I was in last week, cave I was in, I wasn't in the cave, I was just stood there. <laughs> but it's down there, where you've got the, the two large piles of slate and above that is where the cave is. This here is Rainsboro Crag. I think it's Crag, Rainsboro Crag. It is a seriously impressive piece of rock that sticks out from um, on the eastern flank of York. I got some footage last week. I didn't put it in the video, but I'll put it in now. I'll show you what it looks like. Absolutely incredible. Let's go to York. And there's a nice little viewing spot from there, looking down towards Kentmere Res. Hello, doggy. <laughs> oh. Really beautiful views. Looking down towards Kentmere there. I love this stretch of path. It's absolutely gorgeous. But just approaching the summit. The summit is just over that way a little bit. But when I pop over here as a person over there, that's actually the best spot for views. And looking down, so I'm going to go and interrupt them. Get around the edge. Oh, that's lovely. Look at this. Look at this for a view. Oh, I like this path. I like it a lot. Check out the view to the left. So back towards Ilbell. Be careful here though, because you know, if you fall down here, you ain't coming back up again. Right. This is the bit that Wainwright mentions in his book. He puts a little cross on where you should come when you come to the top of York. So the summit's over there, behind me. That's quite cool with the cyclists there, isn't it, look? But yes, definitely worth coming over here. Just popping across, I mean, it's literally two minutes to get here. And you get this fully unobscured view, because at the top of York, you don't really get to see the ground drop away like this. I mean, it is nice by that gate, obviously. You do get some nice views towards the old bell, but you don't get this. <laughs> you know, just the drop into the abyss. Stunning, absolutely love it. Love it so much. <laughs> oh, I did have in the caves, all down there, everything, yeah. And you can actually see the howgills. The howgills are looking really nice. Some nice, soft light illuminating those edges there. I can also see Ingleborough in the distance. It looks like a tiny, tiny little bump. It's weird. Certain angles, it looks big and imposing, but other angles, it just looks like it's flat. <laughs> right, so I'm going to say goodbye to that view now. It's a bit sad. Um, I do like that very much. But I'm going to head up to the summit of York now, and then it's a long, steady trudge down. <laughs> it's a trudge up, but it's probably going to trudge down as well down to Garbon Pass. And at that point, I'm going to have to cross the pass and go up to Sallows. Not looking forward to that bit, if I'm absolutely honest with you. I'm only really going to do those fells because, you know, they are now Wainwrights, but Wainwright himself even says they're not worth walking up. But because he's been there and because of this whole Wainwright bagging thing, i kind of got to go and do it now. Never mind. Lovely, isn't it? Look. Little tanlet. And this gate, this gate is the gate of dreams. I mean, look at it. Hold on a sec. Yeah. It's looking a bit ramshackled now, isn't it? Look. Bits of it have fallen apart. I don't think I'm going to be able to close this. Nope. I think that's going to reach, is it? 
No. I mean, I would fix it myself, but I'm rubbish at DIY. But look at this gate. Do you see what I mean about the view? It's lovely. This really is the land of leading lines. I mean, they're everywhere, wherever you look. Leading lines, all over the place. <laughs> leading lines, and they're all leading to a little snippet of heaven. Okay, I think it's safe to say that this little mini ridge of rock here is probably the actual summit of York. Just having a look around, I can't see anything that's higher. So let's get up to it. Stone, little one, that's a nice one. Just a stone. I hope it's the top. It's, it's, that, it's always the way, isn't it? You know, you, when you stood on one top, somewhere else looks higher than when you get to there. It's like, oh, man, that looks higher now. Very deceptive. Okay, that's it. Four fells done, two more to go. Two that I'm not that bothered about, but I'm gonna do them anyway. Enjoying it, loving it. And if you're loving it as well, please do the huge and smash the like button, as they say. Right, this is beautiful. I'm gonna film looking forward now because you've got the windy path and the cane and the lake and the various layers of hill beyond. As you approach this cairn here, Windermere is slowly revealed. Absolutely stunning. Heck. So you can see obviously the path in front of me here, but there you can see it dropping further down and there's a patch of trees there, a coppice of trees. That is round round about the Garbon Pass. It's been an unusual day weather-wise today. It's been, well, I mean, exactly how it's forecast, you know, this really high level cloud diffusing the sun and just making all the fells look really soft. It, it looks nice. It does look nice, but not, not great for photographs. Honestly, I just don't know when I'm gonna take another photograph. How am I supposed to make a living? <laughs> Look at this, this gate's wide open as well. What's going on? Hmm, I don't know what to do about that, you know. I know you're supposed to leave them as you found them. I'm gonna close it. That's the right thing to do if you're not sure. And there's Trout Bait Village down there. Almost in line with the pub. Very excited. And that sallow's right in front there. Okay, as I approach the Garvin Pass, I'm trying to figure out ways where I can somehow deceive you into thinking that I've been up to Salos. <laughs> Maybe just get someone else's footage and stitch it into this. You'd never know. <sighs> Honestly, if I could, I would. <laughs> Flipping Wayne, right? What was he thinking? Well, like I said, even he said it's not worth walking up. There should be a consensus that, uh, that this is removed from all the Wainwrights. So then there's 212 Wainwrights. Get rid of these two. There's a really beautiful soft light around at the moment. I mean, the side of red screes there just looks, well, it doesn't even look real. Should be a way across here. What a vision this is. I just love these Lake District paths and gates and walls and views. Ah, I think there's a, there's a little style here, I think. Oh, I don't have the strength. Ah, you probably guessed, I've never been up here. And I don't think I ever will ever again. I'm saying that, but you know, Three words, great male fell. Say no more. I love this light. That's quite beautiful. And back up I go. I'll tell you something, literally, in the space of eight minutes maybe, everything's changed. It was quite sunny a minute ago, you saw it, it was beautiful. And now this high level clouds come in, blotted out the sun. And everywhere's looking a little bit dark and flat. 
It could be worse. It could be completely hammering it down, or clagged in. It's nice to be able to see the fells. Come back, my dear little bell. All is forgiven. <laughs> this is now the most boring fell. That said, pretty good flipping view though. Oh, look at that little cairn. So here we are, Sallows. I mean, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right hill. It's an all right hill, but it's not great. I reckon there'll be a better view over on Sour House. So I'm gonna head there straight away uh, before this light goes weird. Some beautiful layers going on in the distance there. And I'll be able to get closer to them if I'm on Sour House. I say it every time, but I have got the wrong lens with me again today. I've got a different one. I thought I'd go for the right lens today and it's been the wrong one again. So it'll be right. So it's like a little bit of a horseshoe actually. I'm gonna sort of contour around a little bit and get round to the top of there. Uh, there's a little bit of uphill, but not a lot. I think that is pretty much it. Right, let's stop yip yapping and get up there. So this is shooting country. Perfect environment for grouse. Well, it's long grass and heather. Woo. I'm only kidding, by the way, about it being boring up here. It's not boring. It is actually quite beautiful. And because there's a lot of heather in August, I bet it's absolutely stunning up here, actually, with the colours. That kind of open moorland with the long grass and heather, there's something quite magical about that in a bleak sort of way. Well, you know, I've said it so many times, bleak is beautiful. Yeah, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here, just following the ridge line round and the horseshoe fashion <laughs> hopefully be in time to get some shots of those layers but like i said wrong flipping lens honestly <laughs> okay there's a little style here get across carry on to the side of the wall yeah not far at all in fact look at it it's just there it's another one of those sorts of styles that's seen better days let's just hope that bit that i'm gonna stand on is still solid let's have a look Solid-ish. Ish will do. There's the summit, pointy bit. Okay, here's our house. Right, let's go. <laughs> I'm only kidding, look at this here, look. <laughs> oh, I do like people's ingenuity. <laughs> But check it out behind. Look at the light back up towards Thresh that mouth. Struggle out there, Thresh that mouth. And Stony Cove Pike. That's really nice. Just cutting in right below this horrible <laughs> high level filter cloud. I've got the wrong lens with me, I swear to God. Uh, I mean it, I really have got the wrong lens. Normally I bring the big lens where I could zoom right in and get that. Honestly, I'll try and get something though. But that is the star of the show, isn't it? Look at that view down towards Windermere. Some really nice light, actually. Nice to look at with the eyes, you know. Wow. Right, let's get the hell out of here. Let's get to the pub. It's a tough call, that one, you know. I don't know if that is the top. Just because it's been adopted by other people as the summit doesn't necessarily mean that it is. There's another little one here that seems to be more in the direction of that ring contour. I kind of do like it around here though. I know I'm sort of berating it and everything, but it is quite nice. Look at this. Is this one slightly higher? Let's have a look, look back. Hey, it might be, you know. I think it might be just a touch higher. Okay, well, I'm glad I did that. No one can say I didn't come to the top. <laughs> right, I'm gonna head off in that direction now, back towards the main gab and pass track. It's going to take me through uh, Limefit Park. I think I'm going to see the pub down there, actually. But hey, this light, it's amazing. It, it looks like some light might hit some of these hills in the foreground here. So I might just wait a few minutes just to see if that happens. Because if it does, that could give quite a lot of texture to this foreground here at the moment. It's a bit... Five minutes, no more, because it is cold. That wind is icy. The light over there is just looking amazing. I'm not going to look again. Drive me crazy. There's some nice light everywhere, actually. 
got Windermere. I don't know if it's coming out, uh, through in this camera. Oh my goodness. Look at, <laughs> look at Frosic now. Look at the whole valley. You can kind of see the tongue as well down there now. Got a tiny bit of sunlight on the top. And you can see the farm as well. Lovely, that is just beautiful. It's weird to think that was up there today. Whee! Oh, we've got to go up. Can't go around. I've got to go up. Should have gone around. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice style. And it's in fairly good nick. Ooh, oh, oh. He says, that's not very good nick. Oh, wow, and it came a cropper then, you know. These styles need fixing. Unless it's just the sheer weight of this body. It could be, it could be that actually it's me breaking all the styles. Right, I can see my van. The van is down there. It's still there, which is always a great sign. And the pub is just there. So let's get down there. Can you guess where I'm going? If you're someone familiar with the lakes, you must be at a guess which pub I'm going to. So this is the penultimate walk in this season. One more walk left to do, and that is right across the valley, up one's fell, and I'll have young Finn with me next week. Nice short walk next week, which is uh, yeah, something I'm really looking forward to, because the last few have been quite big. So I really do hope you can make it out with me on that one. And don't forget, like I mentioned in the last video, if you want to do this walk, the route is always in the description, along with a whole bunch of other details like distance, uh, ascent, difficulty and all that kind of stuff. And also links to my website if you want to help support the channel or buy photographs. And also links to all the gear that I use. Enough of that, let's get through Lime Fit, back to the van and get to the pub. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. 